Welcome back, this is Yamajack, and today we got uh, Gunslinger Mario 64 Remastered Suicidal. And uh, today, Fire Emblem Fates. I'm gonna talk about Fire Emblem Fates. So, I've been playing it again recently. It's a lot of fun. Really, really good. Love the, the, the story and all that. It's mostly because I can, like, turn my brain off and enjoy it, though, but... There are a few things about it that, uh, that stand out to me as being notably strange, to say the least. Um, so the Fates series, um, or the, the, the Fates, like, trilogy has, uh, two different kingdoms that are at war. Uh, the Hoshido Kingdom and the Nora Kingdom, which are both at uh, at war with each other, and then there's a third game which is called like Revelations, I believe. So you have Conquest, Birthright, and Revelations. Conquest is from the Nora perspective, Birthright from the Hoshiden perspective, and then Revelations. I actually don't know. Um, Fire Emblem Face Revelation. What does it do? What's what's the The thing. Um, so the birth rate is the easiest, conquest is the hardest, and then uh, revelation is smack dab in the middle. Uh, revelation. Uh, so unable to bear the thought of fighting either of their families decides to not ally with either. After taking down the lead commanders of the Norian and Hoshiden empires, both perceive this act as treason, and she's forced to flee. Cool. Um, not going to read any more of that. There are um, spoiler alerts and all that. Uh, so you have the, the Hushiden Empire, the Nor Empire, and then the Screw You Both, I'm Killing All of You Empire. Um, and I guess she like starts up her own army and... Uh, I don't know. Starts a, a coup in, in both countries? <laughs> I guess. Sure. Um, I'm assuming that the... I haven't actually beaten it, but I'm assuming that the end of the game has kind of a common enemy. Somebody behind the scenes who's manipulating it, and like kind of towards the end, you kind of convene into like a, a pseudo-friendly sort of situation. Is my assumption. I actually have no clue. But uh, that's the only way I can see Revelations working. And, and making sense. Anyway, uh, and then at the same time, like Fire Emblem Face doesn't like the the plot doesn't really make sense. So I don't like I don't know. Maybe, maybe they do just overrule both of them and just like screw you both. I'm killing everybody. I don't like either of you. Um, I intend to play through all three games eventually. So I'll I'll let you guys know. Not what the story definitely is. I'm not spoiling anything, but um, nothing major anyway. And that's a, that's a major spoiler for sure. Uh, but I will definitely let you guys know if they're good or worth it or whatever, for sure. I'll talk about them. I mean, I'm going to be doing it, so I'll talk about it as I go. Um, anyway. Uh, both of the, all of the games start out in the Norian Empire. In the Nor Kingdom. Um, and you go through a little bit there. Uh, and then... Uh, you get kidnapped by the Hoshiden Empire, and uh, some drama happens over there, uh, and then uh, you you eventually get to decide who you're going to be taking sides with, whether you're going to be siding with the Norian Empire or with the Hoshiden Empire. The main character grew up in the Norian Empire from like a child, that's her whole memory, like she doesn't have memory so much of uh, of her life in Hoshido because she literally just wasn't there. Um, some of her memory was like wiped or whatever and she gets that back but like at the same time she just wasn't even there for it so like you know restoring her memory it's great but like she still just didn't make many memories because she just wasn't there for long because she got kidnapped at a very early age. Um, Anyway, so 
Uh, while you're over in the Nor Empire, early in the game, like first, like I don't even know if it's in, like it's in the first like, not not even the first like chapter in the game, like just the first bit of the game that ever happens, like the first thing that ever happens basically, um, is uh, you end up catching some Hoshiden uh, prisoners, prisoners of war, and uh, the main character's father tells her to kill them so to prove her loyalty to him and she's like nah I don't really want to do that they didn't like do anything We're, we should just like let them go or like you know keep them in jail and you know whatnot and they're like no we have to kill them um, so eventually you know some of the siblings help out and uh, the prisoners are let go and uh, you know, they're like, uh, you're gonna regret this, you shouldn't have let us go, we're gonna come back and kill you. Um. Suits and, boots, guys. We got and then, uh, <laughs> later on in the game, like a few chapters later, uh, if you side with the Hoshiden army, uh, you can recruit people from the enemy team. Which would be the Norian Empire, which would be your old, you know, friends, family, etc. Uh. So at one point when you do this, you end up re recruiting an old friend from the Norian Empire. Uh, one of the characters from the Hoshiden Empire is like, hey, we can't, like, this is literally the commander of this army. Like, we can't just accept them. This is stupid. We have to kill him. And she's like, no, he's my friend. I trust him. And then uh, one of the prisoners of war who she let out is like we can trust her. She let me out when we were over in the when we were when we were imprisoned in the in the Nor Empire. So have you, have you followed so far? I, I'm doing a bad job of explaining, but have you followed so far? So I I look at this and I'm like, yeah, doesn't that just like kind of prove the fact that she's really naive? Like, you would have killed her if if you if you could like. <laughs> you're just like kind of showing that yeah she she's not fit to make these decisions she uh she is not capable of this but you know it's it's uh for the story they they make it happen anyway but i just i got a good chuckle out of it so i'm like yeah no like exactly she's naive and and uh valuing life more than she uh she should enemy's life anyway you know in, in a war you know it's not always about um yeah, I guess, I guess the way to put it is she let those prisoners go, and you know I'm playing those characters in this war. I get to move them around and stuff. They have killed many people. Those people would be, you know, her family and friends. And, uh, you know, not really, not not really a thing of like who do you value more, but but you know you you kind of kind of look at it and be like, yeah, no, they're the enemy. We can't just like let them go. You can't just give them free reign, like. The, they're dangerous. They want to kill us. You know? It's kill or be killed, right? Um, but but the fact that she let them go when, when they were in enemies is apparently used as justification to trust more enemies. And I'm like, yeah, this ain't going to work out. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I just kind of turn off my brain and just enjoy it anyway. As as flawed as the story is, it is also it's it's fun. I like it. I enjoy it. I'm having fun with it. It's good. You know. I'm really enjoying it actually. I bought some of the DLC for uh, Fates as well. It's really hard. Some of the DLC. So a lot of it I haven't done yet. Uh, just because like I tried it. And I'm like, yeah, no, I'm just, we need, we need many more levels before, uh, it'll be at all reasonable to, uh, to engage in this content. But it's nice having that DLC, because when I play through Fire Emblem the first time, I like kind of trivializing it. When I, when I play through in the, in a Fire Emblem game the first time, I like to kind of break the game, you know? Um, Fire Emblem 7 had arenas. Um, so arenas, you could, uh, you could like, 
fighting. Um, and uh, if you were good at the game, and you knew how, you know, the arenas worked, and uh, how, like, hit chance and speed and, like, all this stuff, how it all worked, and how every character kind of interacted together, you could send a character into an arena and be confident that the character will not die and will come out with something to have been gained, some experience or something, and you can continue repeating that process uh, over and over again indefinitely um, and end up getting, you know, your characters all maxed out very, very early on. Uh, so I did that in a Fire Emblem 7 playthrough um, because I just, I like doing that my first time. Then my second time through, I didn't. Um, well, with Fire Emblem 7, it was actually a bit different because that was my first one that I played. I didn't know about this yet. So my first playthrough, first I played end. terribly. I got to the end and I was just softlocked. I couldn't beat the final uh, thing because my lords were far too weak to actually fight. Um, they, they, they just could not do anything. Um, so my second playthrough through, I made the commitment to only use my lords for any combats in the entire game. And, uh, so I only used Ellie Wood, Hector, and Lynn for, for the entire Fire Emblem 7 playthrough that I beat the first time. Uh, and then I believe there were other characters that were, like, required for certain things and stuff, but just Ellie Wood, Hector, and Lynn for any situation that they were able to. Uh, and then uh, I had a rogue who came along as well uh, to open up chests and doors and stuff. Um, and then uh, after that I started playing through it again and I started breaking the game. Um, you know, with the arenas and getting infinite money and infinite levels and you know all that kind of stuff through the, uh, through, through the arenas. Not using glitches, but just... Uh, Smart play with the arenas, so you're able to generate infinite money and infinite XP. It took a long time, but you know, a few days of grinding it out, and you'd get a character up to level 20. And the thing is, there are only so many arenas, right? And when you're trying to do a no-death run, so none of your characters die, um, you you can restart. That's okay. It's doable. Um, but you have to restart the entire chapter. So if you've already done like two characters up to 20 or whatever, and then you make a mistake and your character dies, you have to restart, do all of it all over again. Like I said, it's very easy to not die, but it, uh, it happened on occasion because it's, it takes a long time. It's easy to make a mistake in that long time. Um, and, uh, so you end up losing a character and you have to restart the whole chapter over again and go through all of the arena fighting and everything. And, uh. It was a bit of a pain in the butt, to be honest, but I did it, and I had fun. And I had super, super overpowered characters way early on in the game. Um, yeah, there were only a certain limited number of arenas, so it's not like you could just do, like, you know, Hector on this map, and then the next map we'll do, you know, uh, Lin, and then we'll do, you know, Seth, and we'll, uh, we'll level up France, and, you know, all, all of these characters. Um, like, you had to decide, like, which characters am I leveling up in this chapter, and it was multiple characters, because you have to, you know, plan out how many arenas there were, and, like, what levels they're going to be at that point, and how long you want to invest in it, and how much of a risk you want to take on, on continuing to go for an indefinite period of time. And the other thing is, is you have to have an arena that spawns in a map that also has a shop for both, um, uh like stabs to heal your teammates uh, and weapons uh, because the arena you're going to get hurt you have to get healed up and you're going to use up weapon durability so you have to continue replenishing your weapons um so it was just it was like it was a lot of planning and uh like deciding who i'm going to level up here and who i'm going to level up there and um it was nice because you get to level up your your healers at the same time and but it was it was it was a commitment. It was an investment and a half for sure. Uh, but I did it. Uh, in Fire Emblem Seven or in Fire Emblem Eight, there was the uh, the like uh, the, you got the overworld map, and there were areas where you could go to um, like uh, 
whatchamacallit. There, there were like repeatable missions that you could do over and over and over and over again, like the tower, and uh, I believe there was like a desert one as well or something. Um, so you could continue challenging these, uh, and and there'd just be like you know zombies or whatever in it, uh, and then uh, you could you could level up your characters, get them all nice and high level, take on the rest of the game, and and be good to go, which was uh, which was a beautiful thing. <laughs> That guy got sniped, dude. Uh, and um, Fire Emblem 9, which was Path of Radiance, had bonus experience. So if you did well in a map, you'd get bonus experience. And let me tell you, it was broken. Just totally broken. Um, so there, I don't believe there was any like repeatable missions that you could do in Fire Emblem 9. But the, the bonus experience that you got was enough to level up any character you wanted to 20 and then, you know, promote them and then level them up to 20 again. And, uh, it was, it was, you, you didn't have any XP problems in Bath of Radiance. Um, you had a little bit of money problems at times with, uh, with all the forging weapons and stuff, but uh, even that wasn't like a major problem. Um, so, uh, Radiant Dawn, similar kind of thing. Uh, I believe, again, there were no repeatable missions that you could do, but uh, you would get bonus experience. And the bonus experience in Radiant Dawn was even more broken because you got extra stats. Like in Radiant Dawn, with the, with a bonus, bonus experience level, you were guaranteed to get uh, three stat-ups per level. So uh, if, if you level up your, your character, you're going to get three stat-ups, guaranteed. And then uh, once, you know, it'll, it'll like, you know, if, if the character prioritizes strength, HP, and defense, you're going to get strength, HP, and defense on, like, all of the levels. Um, and then once those are capped, it just picks a different stat to replace it. So you, you eventually just end up, like, capping all of your stats very, very easily um, with the bonus experience in Radiant Dawn, which was, uh, which was fun, for sure. Um... And then you had, uh, I believe, after that it was, I believe after that it was Awakening, or is Awakening the um, first Fire Emblem remake? I can't remember. Um, but that, that like after that, after um, Radiant Dawn, there wasn't really any good sort of like XP cheese, to my knowledge, in any of the games. Uh, Fates, however, does have a, a really good XP cheese because you just have repeatable missions. Um, between each chapter, you can do like castle sieges, which get you XP, um, like raiding other people's castles, uh, which I believe gets you XP. Um, there's like random missions that spawn on the map. You can go scout them. You can pay a bit of gold to go spout it, scout it, and you end up making up a profit most of the time anyway. Uh, there's DLC that you can do repeatedly over and over again endlessly. Like it's just uh, it's a real breeze to to play through Birthright. Um, Conquest is supposed to be harder, so I don't know. They might limit the XP gain. Um, I don't know. But uh, Birthright anyway, which is the one that I have. Very, very like XP friendly. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna say it's easy necessarily. Um, I think that it's... I'm, pl I'm only playing on hard difficulty. It's not that hard, you know. Lunatic I believe is, is quite a challenge, I've heard. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to, to playing through it again on that and then playing through Conquest and Revelation as well, eventually. Uh, and all of the DLC and stuff as well. We end up spending like 150 bucks on this <laughs> this stupid uh, trilogy. Cause it's like 30 bucks a game, and then there's a bunch of DLC and stuff that I also want to play through probably. Um, and then I get to go play through Three Houses finally. I'm so excited. I've heard so many good things about Fire Emblem Three Houses, but I can't play through it until I've played through all of the Fire Emblem Fates games. And then I'll get the Three Houses. It's on the Switch, I believe. I believe it's only on the Switch, which is a little bit of a disappointment to be honest. Actually, you know what? If it's on the Switch, Fire Emblem Three Houses. 
Uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses, I believe, is only on the Switch. Yes, it's on the Switch. Um, can I see some... Okay, so we get back to the 3D... Uh, I don't want to look at any, like, spoilery stuff or whatever. But we get back to the, um, the 3D... Uh, map stuff, which is cool. A lot of people hate the uh, the Path of Radiance animations uh, because you can't fully turn them off. Um, in, in Path of Radiance, uh, the animations when you turn them off are just played on the map, which in my opinion also like look better. Um, but a lot of people hate it just because it takes up a lot of time. In Radiant Dawn, it's the same thing, but you're able to skip the animations by like pushing the B button or start or something. So three houses, uh, it's going to be nice to to have uh, the 3D overworld kind of thing back. Because um, Fates is 2D overworld, which is not as good. It's uh, still like enjoyable. Like, I don't think the game necessarily becomes any more enjoyable because it has the 3D stuff. It just feels more fun. But ultimately, when I look back on it, I don't really think that it was more fun. You know what I mean? Like, my favorite Fire Emblem game is... Well, it's Path of Radiance, definitely. Um, but then beyond that is, is, uh, isn't is Radiant Dawn. The other 3D game is Sacred Stones. Um, so the, the 3D doesn't necessarily make the game, but it's more about the story and the, the feeling of playing through it. Um... Anyway, that's going to do it for today, so thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you like, and subscribe to more of the future comment if you have anything to say, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.